As fall is flourishing outside, you may have noticed over the last month or two months a lot of spiders hanging out around your house. Joro spiders. Well, there is a new contest this week that you can take part in citizen science by taking photos of those lovely creatures outside. Joining me now to talk about this is Rebecca Wallace, the EDMAPS coordinator for the Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health at the University of Joro Gia, as I'm calling it punny. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca, for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So, so how did Joro Watch come about and what is it for people who are not familiar with it? So Jora Watch um, is a program for getting people to report, in this case, Joro spiders. Um, I work on the EDMAPS program. It's a system for getting people and coll collecting data on a variety of invasive pest and uh, biocontrol agent species. It aggregates data from a lot of places. Jora Watch is one of our programs that's a single species program, in this case, to get people to report Jora spiders. Um, the reason we want people to report Jora spiders is to help fill out the map of known distribution for this species. And knowing where the species is will allow the people who do research on these types of species to know where the species is, where it's spreading, what environments it's, it's spreading into, as well as allowing them to potentially go to those places and either do research on these species in the environments they're currently being found in or being able to collect them to do research in laboratories and other places. So it's citizen science and it's a snapshot for scientists to understand more about how they're spreading. For people who, who maybe live in a big apartment high rise and they don't have a house covered in cobwebs, what are Joro spiders? What do people need to see to identify that, hey, yeah, I think this might be a Joro spider? So the most easily identifiable of the Jorah spider, you know, life cycle, is the adult female. Uh, the adult female is the l far larger of the of the um, sexes, and it is um, yellow with bluish greenish bands on the back, and then on the belly, it is going to be yellow and black with a red splotch towards one end. The legs are going to be black with yellow bands, although occasionally we are seeing the uh, legs to be all black. Mm. And so you, you described a lot of different colors there. Do the male and females, are they similar sizes or is one different from the other type? So the female is the body part, so not including the legs, is going to be about a little over half an inch to a little more than an inch long. And then the male body length is going to be a little over a tenth of an inch long to a, about three, a third of an inch long. Um, the male is also going to basically be brown with brown bands or, or, or um, stripes on, on its body. It's very, very, very different looking than the female. <laughs> so then all the spiders I'm seeing my, around my house, they're all females, is what you're telling me. <laughs> um, if you look in their webs, you're probably going to see another spider that doesn't look anything like it. And that's possibly going to be a male Joro spider. The male Joro spiders tend to hang out in the female Joro spider's webs. And they're big webs. I mean, they're a little bit yellow in color. Is that that's yes. distinct for Joro spiders? Not specifically Joro spiders. So the that we do have a native spider that is in the same genus. Um, that also makes these golden webs. It's actually, the common name for it is the golden silk orb weaver. And that's also found in Georgia and, and the Southeast as well. Um, but the, the uh, again, the adult female is the most easily identified of the two sexes for that species as well. And, it, and as an adult, it's going to be more of an orange with silvery spots on its back. And the legs is, will be kind of an orangey yellow with brown bands that have tufts on them, on the brown parts. They're kind of like little leg warmers right at the joints. <laughs> love, to, love to hear that. Um, Rebecca, let me ask you this. So you have these, these maps, these beautiful maps on your website that show all these counties where we've spotted the Joro spiders uh, in the past. How do you hope that photos as part of this contest will help better identify where scientists are seeing them spread? So having the photo contest as part of the Joro 
spider spotting contest. So this is the fourth, fourth year we've been running the spotting contest. And we're really encouraging the photos to help people to remember to include photos in their reports. Um, the vast, vast majority of the records coming in are being just looked at online. There's not someone going out into that particular area to see those spiders themselves to independently confirm that. So we're really relying on good, clear photos to be able to review those records um, and know, okay, yes, that is what they reported. Because we do occasionally get um, reports of Jorah spiders that the photos included are not a Jorah spider. So these good, clear photos will help us to make sure that the data that we're putting out for those researchers is, is high quality. So for people who have these Jorah spiders near their house, how can they get involved? Where do they need to go and how do they submit a photo? So the easiest way is to go to jorowatch.org. It's a website, one of our websites that we're using in this case for allowing people to have a venue through which to report Joro spiders. Uh, there's a big button on there that says report, and then you fill out the form, and at, at the very minimum, um, and please include the location where you saw it and um, when you saw it. It's automatically going to fill out your reporting of Joro spider. And, uh, you know, those are the only required pieces of information, but if you have additional information, please include that. And again, photos are incredibly important in reporting this. As I mentioned, this, this is part of the overall EdMaps environment. And so you can also download the EdMaps app, E-D-D-M-A-P-S, and that will allow you to report a lot of things, including Jorah spiders, or we also have the, Jor the EdMaps website that you can report through as well. There's a number of different ways to reach us. Wonderful. And because photos are now a part of this, can, can you mention how long is this contest going on? And what would the prize be? Say if you see the most number of reports in a given county or the first uh, sighting in a county, are, are there special fun prizes? So the contest started at midnight, October 6th. So it's already started now. And it will go until, um, let me look at this. It will go until the, um, the 12th, 11.59 p.m. So it's a week long. And um, so what we've done in the past and what we still have this here, we have these nice big high quality stickers that people can put on laptop cases, water bottles, things like that. So we've been mailing these out um, in the past and we still have a bunch of those left. Um, and people have seemed to really enjoy those. We've also done in the past um, digital badges. So that you could put on your social media that you were the first person to spot in a county or you were the first, you know, the person who had the most number of verified reports, most number of verified count reports in counties and so forth. So we've had a couple different things we've done in, in the past. Um, and with the photo contest, you know, it's just another added thing that people, a uh, way that people can participate. And I think I missed asking this earlier. So Juro spiders, we see them all across the metro. Are they aggressive or do they pose any risks to humans or pets? They are um, not medically significant for humans or, or pets as far as I've heard. Um, they, they are spiders, so they are going to, you know, bite insects and things that come into their webs, but you've got to go into their webs and be an insect for them to really particularly, you know, be interested in you. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and last question, can you just kind of summarize, what is Jorah Watch and what are you doing this year that's different from the previous years of spotting the spiders and having citizens getting involved? So the Jorah Spider Spotting Contest is part of Jorah Watch and um, it involves in engaging the public in reporting the Jorah spiders that they're seeing so that they can participate in uh, getting data available in a huge way for researchers for, so that for the research that they're doing. Um, we are sending out things like stickers for um, the most verified accurate reports, the most unique counties with verified reports. 
the first verified report in a county as well as um, we added this year the photo contest so that we are encouraging people to report Joro spiders with very good, accurate, high quality photos so that we can really promote um, the taking of photos with the with the records. So we are getting towards the high point of the year for Joro spider spotting. Again, this is the time of year when the um, spiders are most uh, mature. So you're going to see the most number of mature female spiders, which are the most identifiable parts, uh, life, life parts of the spiders. So as we get through the rest of the year that you're going to start seeing fewer and fewer as we get towards winter. Do they die in the winter? How do they come back the next year? Do you know that? Yes. So uh, Joro spiders have a one year life cycle. They, um, adult females, males, you know, they, they come become sexually mature in early fall and they will lay eggs in, you know, mid October through November, those eggs over winter. Um, and then they will hatch in late spring, early summer. Uh, but they're very, very hard to identify at that point because juveniles don't look very similar to the adults. Um, so they overwinter as, as egg masses. Very helpful. So that's good to know. If you've got a lot of spiders around your house, just hang in there. We'll see less of them around, hopefully, as we close out towards Thanksgiving and get towards the end of the year. Rebecca Wallace with the University of Georgia, uh, EdMaps coordinator with the University for or Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health. That is a tongue twister. It is. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that you get a lot of photos coming in from all across the state tracking these Joro spiders. It's the epicenter here in Georgia with the first Joro spiders spotted in 2013 and they just keep multiplying and multiplying and moving further out of the city as we've gotten through the last decade. Thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me.